Hey, are you interested in learning more about Juniper Automation? Be sure to check out the Juno's Platform Automation course. Just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the course in the keyword search box. You can also view the full automation learning path at juniper.net slash learning paths. Now let's get to your learning bite. Welcome to Juniper Network's Learning Byte. My name is Mauro Fianos, and I'm a lab architect with education services within Juniper Networks. In this learning bite, I'll be talking about Juno's automation using Windows PowerShell. So Posh Junos is a Windows PowerShell module that is available under the GitHub URL that I posted here. It allows you to run uh, Junos commands on multiple devices using Windows PowerShell. So you may ask, why Posh Junos? Okay. Uh, if you are a network or server administrator who is already familiar with uh, Windows PowerShell scripting environment, uh, you may find uh, it easier to write automation on the same uh, Windows PowerShell scripting language using Posh Junos, okay? So uh, the next thing will be, you know, integrating uh, Posh Junos with your existing PowerShell scripts, which also performs like, uh, you know, compute or storage provisioning. You may know, know already that vSphere, PowerCLI, NetApp PowerShell Toolkit, and Hyper-V VM provisioning can be performed using PowerShell already. So you may have scripts that does all those and you want to add the network provisioning as part of the same script. So uh, you can use PowerShell. Okay. Lastly, uh, you like to avoid learning another programming language like Python, Ruby, and Perl. However, if you are doing any advanced automation with uh, Juno's devices, I would recommend you uh, learning Python, Ruby, and Perl, which are also available on the Windows platform as well. Okay. Some prerequisites or recommendations uh, for uh, Power Juno's. First, you need to have some basic understanding of uh, Windows PowerShell. There are plenty of courses that are free inside the Microsoft Virtual Academy, which is mva.microsoft.com. Okay, so you can check those out. You need to have PowerShell installed on the system that is going to be running the scripts. Good thing is that most of the latest Windows uh, operating systems, like uh, Windows 7 or Windows uh, 10 uh, and Windows Server 2012, uh, should already have PowerShell installed. Uh, if it's not installed, then you should install it regardless uh, to be able to run it, okay? You need to have access rights to install Windows PowerShell modules uh, uh, for the Power Junos, which is also a module. There are some instructions about installing Power Junos uh, under the GitHub URL, as I've shown here, so you can check that out. And uh, it's very handy, so I'm just going to go through that GitHub page real quick to give you a quick overview, uh, and, and you can take a look and then install it on the system, okay? So without further ado, let me open up that uh, page. So as you see here, this is the page I'm in here, which uh, gives me instruction about uh, you know about this module. And a big thanks to uh, Scott Ware, who basically uh, uh, owns this uh, uh, GitHub project. Uh, so big thanks to him. But you can you can check out this uh, in the installation instruction. As you see here, this module requires uh, Posh SSH. Uh, you know, so you need to install that first. So if you click on that, you know you can basically uh, you know get, get the installation instruction to install that module. Basically, if you run this command here, that they'll install Posh SSH. Same way, uh, you know you can either use the Posh uh, the the uh, psget module to get the Posh Junos installed, or you can just copy this URL here and then uh, put it in your Windows machine uh, in the Posh environment. You should be able to install it. So that's pretty handy. Okay, and there is a very nice wiki here that uh, gives you some overview about the commands that you can run with the uh, this uh, in the Power Junos. Uh, so I'm just going to go through uh, some of those commands. Uh, I will go through the get Junos and invoke Junos command for this learning byte, and you can you can uh, read further about the other commands uh, uh, under this uh, wiki page. You might find it helpful. So I'm just going to go to a Windows Server environment that has access uh, to my uh, network uh, for the network devices that I'm going to be, uh, you know, showing you. Um, so uh, I'm just going to bring up PowerShell here. 
Okay, so um, to start, uh, you know, working on Parse Junos, I first need to import the modules. There are some instructions uh, on the on the GitHub page how to provide that and make it permanent. Uh, you can make it part of your profile if you want it, but I'm just going to show you the easy way here for now. And then I'm going to import Posh SSH module. Okay, so uh, so now that I have uh, imported those two modules, uh, and you can make them part of your script as well, and which I'll show you, um, so that they're always imported uh, on the machine. Uh, before you run any commands. So uh, I'm just going to go to the first uh, command that I can do here called get Junos. What, what it does, it allows you to get some facts from Junos device. So I'm just going to go to SRX device that I have here. And then if you do tap, dash tap, then you can see different options that you can pass to this command. So I'm just going to do slash device. 10 to 10, 14, 131 is my device IP. I can pass a host name that is fully qualified. And then I'm going to pass a username, lab, and a password, lab13. Okay. And that should give me some facts. Press enter. So, you know, I see the uh, it's SRX uh, A1 is host name and the Juno's version. And the model and the software type. Okay, so this is you know helpful when you're making automation. Like you know you can uh, you know uh, get some facts uh, and then uh, decide based on those facts, right? Um, so um, you can also run um, uh, just give me a second here on an MX device here. I can also run an MX device here, for example. Okay, let's show you. Which uh, you know goes to an MX device and you know get the facts. So uh, you know very important and very helpful uh, you know this get Junos command right. So uh, I'm just gonna go to a, a script that shows you some some of the uh, useful feature that you can you know and uh, understand how you can use Power Junos uh, for your automation. Okay. So uh, the first uh, example that I have here uh, is, is basically uh, the systems that have PowerShell installed should have a, a tool called PowerShell ISC. Uh, if you're on a Windows server, if you go to, for in this case, I have a Windows 2012 server, uh, and uh, I can go to PowerShell ISC. So that basically gives us a better editor uh, to script, uh, you know, edit uh, PowerShell scripts. It's people who are familiar with PowerShell already know this, I think, uh, and, and that's what I'm going to be using uh, to write, uh, you know, to show my script here. So this is a basic script. So what it does basically, uh, the, you see there's a devices, uh, you know, array here, uh, you know, which has this, uh, you know, a list of device IPs here. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be running the get Junos command on all of these devices. And if it's an SRX 240H2, then I will run the specific command. For example, I'm going to see if it's a show chassis cluster status command, right? And I'm going to talk about this uh, invoke Junos command that I'm going to be using, which is part of the parse Junos uh, uh, module, right? Uh, so what it's going to do is going to, uh, you know, first uh, it's going to look through, look through this uh, uh, all these devices, right? And which is this is for each you know, in devices. So it's going to look through that, and then it's going to have a variable called my facts. So that's the great thing about parse Junos. You, know, so you can get those facts. On a variable, which will be a hash table, you know, it gives you a hash table, which is similar to Python dictionary kind of scenario, or Perl uh, dictionary, or hash, either one of them. But similar, similar concept here. Uh, so I get Junos uh, on this device, and then I, I store the facts on the my facts variable, and then I look at the my facts variable uh, hash table, and I see if it's a, if it if it contains SRX 240H2, then I print you know found SRX. 240H2, and I print the output of the facts, whatever the facts I get, okay, and then um, I invoke Juno's command. So that's that's the thing that I want to show you. So so that's the Posh uh, Juno's uh, command as well that you can run. So you can run, uh, you can invoke any Juno CLI commands, and you can also go to config mode with this command if you want it, which I'll show you as well. Uh, and then uh, you know pass the device uh, name and the user password and pass the command here. And you can also chain command here, like as I showed here. You know, which I will show you, and and uh, so if it's SRX, it's going to run the show chassis cluster status. Else, 
if it's a uh, MX80 router, uh, then it's gonna run a show BGP neighbor command and show routing engine command. Okay. So uh, with the further ado, let's run this command and see what it does. Let me clear my screen, and uh, I will show the output in this screen here. So I'm just gonna go here, I'm gonna click on play. Okay, so it's gonna invoke that script. So what it's gonna do is gonna go through the uh, devices right now. I'm just gonna let it run, and I'm gonna show you the uh, output, and then analyze what what we see here. Okay. So as you see here, I just run the script. It's going through all these devices, right? So one, one, two, three, four, five, six devices that it went through. Okay, and it's done. Okay. So uh, I'm just gonna show a few, and then you kind of get the idea, right? So let's go to the top of the uh, output here. So when the script ran, it it went through, you know, uh, the first device, and it found that it's the SRX 240H2, right? And that's true, right? So then um, you know, it, uh, it basically ran the cluster status, which is not enabled, right? If I go to this device, so that if I run that command, that will do the same thing, because Chase's cluster is not enabled right now. And then um, it was to the second device, uh, and uh, you know, and so on. And I'm going to go to the MX device here. So for example, here it is. It's found an MX device. Okay, uh, found MX80. And then host name, you know, it's uh, MXA1, and then it's a, as you see, it's a model MX80, and it ran the uh, show BGP neighbor. In fact, you know, I, if I go to the uh, device directly, right? Uh, let me go to the device, then I can compare you. Neighbor is not running, right? So same output that I got on the script, right? So same thing here, and then it runs the you know show uh, routing engine, okay, command. So that's that's pretty handy, right? So you can do all sorts of interesting things on your doing provisioning, right? Um, so uh, let me show you config mode uh, as well with the same uh, same uh, uh, module, uh, same command, invoke Jonas command, which is on this one. Uh, so what it does is basically uh, another feature is that you know, it you can pass instead of you know um, you know passing as array uh, or a variable, it can actually pass a file which has a list of devices, right? So for example, let me uh, show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna call invoke Junus command on a device on a set of devices based on this devices.txt file, and then uh, you know I'm gonna also pass some commands based on this command.txt file, okay, on all of the devices. Right, so let me show you both of these files, and you can get the idea of what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so I'm going to do Notepad uh, devices.txt. Okay, so this file has you know three devices, and these are all three of them are SRX devices. And uh, let me Notepad the command.txt. Okay, so it's going to go to configure, set system services, uh, uh, netconf SSH. So it's going to enable netconf SSH service and then commit. Okay, and then we're going to run the next command is going to be running same set of devices, going to run the shell configuration system service just to see if it's, you know, it got in. Okay, and I can go to one of these devices just to show you right now what I have. Okay. Okay, so let me see if I have uh, so I don't have netconf SSH enabled. Okay, I don't have it enabled. So without further ado, let's run it. Okay. So it's just gonna give it a time. Okay. So what it's doing at this point is gonna um, you know go through each of these devices and run uh, run the the, the command.txt file. Okay, so it's, as you see here, it's gone to the first device and it's going to the configuration mode and we see commit complete from the output. Okay, um, 
and then it's going to go to the next one which is the uh, 10 to 10 14 132 and then run the same thing okay it done okay good I'm just going to expand this uh, screen here and you can actually read the uh, the the wiki there and there are different options so there is also a way to uh, run um, config command uh, through a template based configuration file uh, so you can try that uh, but you know you can also do that with this uh, this command here invoke genus command and uh, you can you can feed in a CSV file and then uh, you know run run uh, multiple device configuration commands same time okay so uh, as you see here you know it's done right so uh, as you see here uh, you know the first device you know we now have netconf SSH enabled in all of these devices so uh, that's the power you know uh, you basically can uh, you know for example uh, in a provisioning scenario you know you have a VM that you have to provision and put that on a specific VLAN uh, and you want to go to a Juno's device and you know uh, put that uh, VM into specific VLAN, the interface that corresponds from the server. You can you can basically uh, and run a power CLI command on VMware side, and then the same uh, PowerShell script can go to Juno's device and, and run Juno's commands. Okay, so I hope uh, this video is helpful. Uh, thank you for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.